Greetings, this is me, Minute, and we're back for another episode of Spider-Man the Movie the Game after a long month, or nearly a month of no content. I swear I wasn't supposed to be doing this on purpose, but whatever. But yeah, today's part we're just going to be taking down the Shocker and then we'll be facing off against his partner in crime, the Vulture. And also, uh, yeah, this mission, well, listen, I'm just going to say this right here. If you fail this mission, even though the game literally told you how this is supposed to work, uh, you have no right to complain. Though please do be careful not to make sure you don't, you don't get uh, too close to Shocker's shockwaves. <laughs> but... Yeah, this is actually, uh, I'm actually surprised they actually used that mechanic, uh, from earlier in the second level. No, in the third level, where, uh, early on. That's actually surprising. But, yeah, in this game, you actually web zip far more, uh, than you did in the previous games, which I actually appreciate for them actually making the web zip far more useful in this game. Of course, you're gonna be more... You're gonna, you're not always gonna be doing a lot of, you know, locking on stuff, but you know, it's uh, the fact that you can actually web zip, which is, you know, actually pretty damn fast. You know, it's actually pretty damn helpful, and it helps with uh, getting stuff done much faster. And yeah, we also got a new uh, combat move, which uh, if you fail to get it, you have to start all over again because it doesn't respond until you restart the level, of course. <coughs> Yeah, in this country, this far isn't as good as the previous take, but... Yeah, Gagavity Fall, the greatest boss fight you've ever seen. Yeah, you remember how in the in the, in the Spider-Man 2 Intellectual, we had to web yank him and grab all the crates and it was all on fire, the building was on fire and stuff? Guess what he do? Yeah, that's what he does. Uh, shock Tornado shocks you, and that, like that. And you just punch him and web impact him until he's dead. Yeah, the the, the boss. F I realize that at this point, this is where the boss fights were just honestly a downgrade compared to the first two games. Because well, yeah, the boss fights were like the greatest boss fights ever. I do think there were far better design here, there than here, which is just you just well throwing hands and that's it. And you can pretty much easily cheese this boss fight, these boss fights too, well, provided you're actually good at this game. And well, some of them I can easily cheese, others I can't. Well, mainly because I say cheese because when, well, you got unlimited webbing, well, you can pretty much easily cheese these guys, but since I don't have it, uh, you can't. And even when you don't have it, uh, yeah, these boss fights aren't really that fun to fight against, to be honest. Because again, all you're just doing is just, you know, it's just happy slaps and that's it. No clever, uh, uh, set, there's no set piece or anything to beat the villain at all. You just punch him until they're dead, and just like that. We beat the Shocker. And in case you're wondering, no, I'm not playing the Shocker clip. I was going to, but I can't be bothered doing it. Because I'm lazy and I just want to get this part done already. And also, fun fact, I actually, uh, am redoing this part after I've done the next part. Isn't that funny? I wonder how the Spiderman fan club uh, would be like in prison. Well, what, what, what do you mean? What, what would it be like? Of course, well, we all know what it would be like. But now we must face off against the Vulture, and uh, this part I actually had before I actually was uh, well, when I was planning to uh, get this part done for the many days beforehand for today. Yeah, this is one of the few things I actually knew what I was going to talk about, and... Uh, yeah, the Vulture. <coughs> we all... If you guys remember Spider-Man 4, the movie that we never got, um, the Vulture was supposed to be the villain in that movie. And, well, who is the villain that Toby faces in this game? The Vulture. And also, just for a bit, I'm just, I am just—I just recorded this bit just to show off what the spider model looks like. And also just because I wanted to have a bit of time wasting before we can get to the main uh, point of the level. And also so I could have more tangents. But, um, 
Yeah, and also there was supposed to be a tie-in game for Spider-Man 4 as well, but I do wonder, like, if the game was released, um, would they have acknowledged uh, the events of the first game, or would they just completely ignored it because, like, like in like the later for some of the other villains that do appear in you know Spider-Man two and three, they do acknowledge the events of the first game. So this is a very interesting case with uh, Vulture. And, um, yeah, in case you're wondering why exactly we never got Spider-Man 4, well, because of Avi Rod saying, Oh, bro, just put in Venom, it's totally worth putting in a character you, you know nothing about, just for the sake of the fans, bro. And Sam Raimi really did not like, uh, Spider-Man 3, to this day he still doesn't like it. And he wanted Spider-Man 4 to be a far better film, but he just couldn't do it. And so we decided, well, they, they couldn't find, make, they couldn't, like finalize a script he was actually happy with and eventually he was like yeah I'm, I'm out just go and make your reboot like you always planning to which is mm, kind of uh, I don't know how to put this well how to say it but doesn't seem kind of doesn't seem right to me that they actually planned a reboot behind uh, Simon Remy's back you know seems kind of scummy if you ask me but yeah, uh, thanks a lot. Uh, oh, bright idea, Vulture. Blow up your whole tower. I'm sure that's not going to mess up uh, your lair or any equipment or, I don't know, hurt innocent people nearby if the building gets even more... if the, if the fire spreads more. And yeah, like I said earlier with the web zipping, while you mostly won't be using a lot of lock-on, you won't be using the lock-on feature that much, uh, it is actually pretty useful when you least expect it. And did I? Yeah, there's a spider token here. Which did I? I, I wasn't paying attention. I don't. I don't care. But what was I gonna say again? I forgot. I forgot, and I'm out of touch with my commentary skills. Oh yeah, I didn't get it. Gravity slam. I forgot how that move even works. Oh no, yeah. Um. I'm actually surprised that there's this bit of a maze to the whole level when we get to here. That's interesting, I guess. Also, who is Quasimodo? Like, who who is that? And I know I can't be bothered to stock that up because I'm lazy. Because that's in character of me. And that makes these videos good, you know. Because if I'm not in character, then it's automatically bad because people on the internet say so. And if the thing is in character, then, oh, it's automatically a good thing because in character and it uh, doesn't matter if the story is crap. <laughs> I, I was not expecting that and I legit forgot about that. No, yeah, by the way, be careful when you're going through this level because those bombs and spider bots, when they blow up, they, they can't take a good chunk of your health off. And, uh... Well, I guess, since we were talking about the Vulture in Spider-Man 4, how he was supposed to be in that movie, then, you know, that movie got cancelled, uh... Yeah, I might as well talk about, like, what was he supposed to be in that film. Uh, in that film, he was supposed to be, uh, the main villain for, like, the first half. That's one but half then... The uh, he gets killed off during a fight between him and Spider-Man, which was quite, uh... Well, judging from the, uh, from the storyboards, uh, Vulture actually ends up getting injured and then eventually dies. Which then leads to his daughter becoming the Vultress, who is also Felicia Hardy. You know, Black Cat. And, yeah, th this, this is very derivative of the first three movies with Harry and Norman Osborn and... Really? You, you couldn't think of anything different from that? Just retread the first three films? But still though, this was one of the possible versions of the film that we were supposed to get, but... As far as any other version, we we don't know. Hey, Vulture. Didn't your mother ever teach I know yeah, for these levels when you're chasing a villain, make sure you're going up and down on the control stick to make sure Spidey goes fast. Because, um, yeah, that's the only way for him to actually speed up. And he actually does move pretty damn fast when you're... Yeah, like that. He actually... It actually feels pretty... 
surprisingly nice to move around when he's web swinging like this. Oh, but oh no, because it doesn't, it doesn't make you feel like Spider-Man, therefore it's automatically bad. Feeling of, speaking of feeling like Spider-Man, yeah, we gotta make sure that billboard doesn't fall down. <laughs> oh man, Toby, he's so underrated when it comes to his quips. Like, why didn't he quit more in the films, man? The games, he's fantastic. And this and the third game, I feel, is far his best works. And two... He's kind of just like going through the motions. It's like, I don't know what happened in the second game, but he's kind of just winging it. Oh, and speaking of voice actors, uh, the voice actor of Vulture in this game was also the voice of Mung Dal from Chowder and Dr. Animo from Ben 10. And honestly, I think this is the best Vulture voice we've ever gotten. And it's the voice I also think of whenever I'm reading the comic books. And, uh... I guess to go back more into the uh, film version of Vulture, considering the fact that we did eventually get a movie version of Vulture in the MCU, uh, I actually like uh, Michael Keaton's Vulture. Not just because I, actually, because I like Michael Keaton, but because I actually thought he was one of the few good parts of the film. Like, I thought he had a good motivation, I liked his characterization. I felt as if he, he was he had understandable reasons, you know, for doing what he did. And even though his whole family were being revealed to be uh, Liz Allen, was very, it was completely done for the sake of shock value. I do at least appreciate that, you know, they at least give him a reason beyond, you know, you know, just uh, actually no, even if they didn't give him the whole uh, if they didn't have that plot twist, it'd still be understandable because I mean like. You know, like people who do, people do lose their job over things that are beyond their control, and it does suck. You know, it's very unfortunate that thing happens. But hey, what are you gonna do? Life, life is a pain, and it's always gonna be pain. But let's get back to the game. Uh, yeah, for this level, you're having to face off Vulture while it's raining, and also lightning will strike you. Well, provided you're on the top of the. Uh, Actually, what building is this supposed to be? I don't remember. But yeah, as you saw right there, you can actually land on vi on the you know, enemies as long as you're holding the A button and uh, uh, deliver some powerful moves against them. I can't stay airborne anymore. I miss voice acting like this, where like I know it sounds kind of silly. Like we, I don't know how to put it, but like I know it may sound kind of silly and quaint by today's standards or whatever, but. There's a certain level of charm to it that is just so... Oh, excuse me. That's so amazing and I much prefer this over the generic anime dub voice acting we've been getting in games of recent. Especially the performances of Liri, Yuri Lirenthal in Spider-Man 2, the game. Spider-Man 2, uh, PS5, I mean. That's not such a confusing title, now is it? And, uh, yeah, just right here, this is where we get another spider token and just, as you see, as you saw just right there, yeah, do please be careful because if you get struck by the lightning, uh, you're dead. Because as we all know, lightning strikes the tallest thing. Uh, I forgot what it, it, it strikes the tallest thing because because it just does, okay. And also, do be careful for vulture that vulture doesn't uh take you down while you're doing so. You damaged my beautiful wings! How dare you! I love the voice acting in this game. I don't care if it's quaint or if it's corny or cringe or anything. It's far better than the pretentious anime dub voice acting we get in things nowadays. Like, no disrespect to all the actors and stuff in these newer games, but... Really, like, the voice direction, they really need to improve upon a lot of things. And the actors... Really, I do think they need to really step up the game and not just sound like generic anime voices in blood anime dubs, which is very annoying and also the main reason why I just refuse to watch anime dubs to begin with. Well, besides one, but that's for I discuss it for another day. And if you can get the reference, um, well, here you go. Actually, I can't do the reference. I have to... Fuck. I didn't get to talk about the boss fight that much, but, um, yeah, I tried to move one of the moves and, oh yeah, just like that, I think it was the sting move. Yeah, I actually managed to pull it off before I nearly died. But I couldn't pull it off beforehand because the input lag on my TV or some crap. Because CRTVs don't have an input lag compared to HDTVs when they're playing older consoles or some crap. But 
Pressure yeah, they look like they went to the end ahead. of the part, so uh, see you later, guys.